Hey guys, Eric the Aviator with you here today talking about are old airplanes still safe? Let's talk about it. The Boeing 737 that you fly almost every single time you are on a commercial flight, either that or the A320, and there are a few other regional jets, but 737 is the most popular commercial jet in the industry, and that originally was designed in 1965. Wow, that's only 53 years after the Titanic sunk, and only about 57 years after the Model T was invented. All right, now picture this. Can you imagine driving across the country in a Model T, or maybe even sailing across the ocean in the Titanic? Now there's a scary thought. And yet, we are using these airplanes that were designed not too long after those two things were invented and created, and the 737 that you fly in today is very similar to the originally designed 737 back in 1965. So is it still safe? Well, that is a question I have to ask myself every single time I get into the airplane, because my airplane was not just designed in 1966, but it was built in 1966. The wings, the airframe, the fuselage, the empennage, all that stuff was built in 1966. Is it still safe to fly or is it a complete death trap? We're gonna go over a few reasons why it is still safe to fly and why you can feel peace of mind even though these are dinosaurs that we're flying in. The first, I would say, and the, most, the foremost reason that they're still safe is because airplanes are extremely simple compared to, say, big ocean liners like the Titanic or uh, even modern day cars. Extremely simple. My airplane consists of a wing, a extremely just enclosure built out of aluminum essentially, and an engine. And then obviously you have a tail with another wing and a rudder, but extremely simple. Like you could build one of these in your garage. In fact, some people do build these in their garage. Um, perfect example of that is Mike Patey. He built some awesome stuff in his garage. I doubt it's in his garage anymore, but you can build these things in your garage. When's the last time you talked to someone who built a car in the garage? I've known maybe one person who has known a guy that did it. It's not very common because cars are extremely complex. Airplanes, on the other hand, I've seen guys that don't even know how to rivet. They don't know how to weld. They don't know how to paint. And they start building an airplane. And guess what? They learn some of those skills, but some of them you don't even have to know. They're extremely simple machines. You, you realize that a bicycle that was built 60 years ago it might still work as long as it was maintained properly, as, a mo as long as there were certain things like maybe the chain was replaced, the pedal that was replaced, certain things, it could still be a perfectly reliable bike. And that go is the same exact ideology for airplanes. So let's talk about maintenance for a little bit. Maintenance on aircraft is extremely meticulous and regulated. So. Um, on a normal casual jet airliner, it's going to be completely overhauled every five to eight years. Um, and that's actually pretty high time for these guys because they're flying 12, 18 hours a day sometimes. And so the, those hours build up quick. But every five to eight years, they get completely overhauled. And you might be saying completely overhauled. What does that even mean? Like, do they just, you know, it's just an inspection? Well, let me put it this way. It costs them five to fifteen million dollars, depending on uh, what needs to be overhauled, uh, what different maintenance needs to be done, and what airplane and, or jet they are looking at. Five to fifteen million dollars, and when you compare that to a Honda jet, starting cost is about five million dollars. Just an overhaul is five to fifteen million dollars on these commercial jetliners. So you're basically getting substantial work done on that jet during these overhauls. So some of these jets can be years and years old. They stopped production on 747s years ago, and yet some of those are still flying, and they're completely safe because of the meticulous maintenance that are done on these jets. Now, for the general aviation side, uh, most of the time, it, they require an engine overhaul around every 2,000 hours, um, and this is because it's privately owned. It's more of a suggestion. Um, and in some ways there's different regulation on that, but basically you should overhaul your engine every 2000 hours 
give or take uh, some engines are different and this is going to cost you anywhere from i mean it's a broad range thirty thousand on a smaller engine uh sometimes you know older engines or popular engines are, are cheaper uh anywhere up to 70 80 000 on some of your bigger uh, piston engines that are just going to be extremely hard to overhaul of course when you get into turbo props overhauls are going to be even more than that getting into the hundreds of thousands um, and usually 2,000 hours if you have a decently fast plane a slower plane obviously you're going to spend more hours trying to get you to your location uh, so you have to take that into account but in a decently fast plane like a 182 if you're flying it pretty average uh, it'll take you about 10 to 15 years uh, to get to that hour rating now if you're using your aircraft for uh, commercial use if I was flying someone around in my 182 um, and they were paying me to do that, that would be, I would have to get that inspected every 100 hours. So the maintenance that goes behind this is extremely complex and it's extremely regulated and you know, everything has to be written down and every part that is on your airplane is a part that was FAA certified, every single part. So like a car could have the same rubber gasket and it would be, you know, 20 cents at Napa or whatever auto store you know you have where you're at it'd be 20 cents at the, at the auto store you go and get it for an airplane it might be ten dollars no joke maybe five dollars you know so there's there are so many things that FAA has to stamp and say this is good for an airplane this this is gonna work for an airplane on every single part so obviously that increases the cost but also in some ways increases the reliability you know and if you're buying a five dollar o-ring that has been tested by the faa well there's a less likelihood of that o-ring having a little crack in it uh, if an o-ring has a crack in it and oil's getting where it's not supposed to that could cause major issues in a car it's like pull over and whatever that's one key thing that keeps these airplanes flying forever is just that regulation of of maintenance it's required if you're going to fly it it's required you have to do it uh you have to have an annual which is about two thousand dollars every single year and they go through every surface of that airplane they take it apart they look at everything every single year so that's what keeps these things flying for 50 our plane is almost 60 years old and still flying strong and there's this other aspect of it too like with a car if you're engine goes out and it's going to cost you five thousand to replace that engine and your car is worth seven thousand you might just say you know what it's not really worth it sell the car get a couple grand maybe for it or whatever and get a new car or maybe you just junk it out completely and go get a whole new car well with airplanes because an air airplane's so expensive that almost never happens i mean cars get junked out all the time not airplanes because they are worth so much, even without an engine, even without a wing, people rebuild them. They get into, they get major damage from crashes or hard landings and people rebuild them because they have so much value within themselves. So that is one huge uh, factor that comes into play when, when we talk about these airplanes lasting forever. If, if an engine goes out, you put a new engine in the airplane. If, if a wheel falls off, you rebuild the whole strut structure to make sure that doesn't happen again. So these things are constantly being replaced and updated. So when I say my airplane is 60 years old, well, my engine may not be 60 years old. So some of my key components may not be 60 years old, but um, the airframe itself is 60 years old. So that's, that's one major aspect as well to why these things last so long. The downside is that we are dealing with designs that are somewhat primitive to, compared to the technology that we have today. There are airplanes that are coming out today, especially in the military realm, that are extremely advanced. And even in the civilian realm, uh, extremely efficient. They can haul more people, pay, pay less cost and fuel, and go faster. But you're going to be paying close to a million dollars for any of these new designs because designing an airplane is extremely, extremely expensive. The amount of testing you have to go through to design a new airplane is just crazy and it takes years. Once you design one, you can prototype it, but it'll be years before it ends up on the, the market because all the testing and paperwork and document and documents and stuff that have to go into that. So because of that, um, all the regulation, all this kind of stuff, all, making sure that these things are safe what you end up with is you end up with designs that were just kept because the manufacturer saying hey we can't afford 
to design something new. FAA has already proved this design. Let's keep it. So you see that Cessna 182 hasn't really changed since 1966. Like it's very similar. They haven't really made one significant change in the brand new 182 compared to my 182. The changes are so minuscule because designing a whole new aircraft is so expensive. You look at car manufacturers and every year it's a different body style. Every year it's a different engine. Hey, let's try this engine. Let's do this. Yeah, there, there is some regulation, but compared to airplanes, it's not even close. That's why you're flying in a Boeing 737 that was designed in 1965, because it costs so much to design a whole new airframe design that manufacturers are like, we can't even do it. We can't even do it. So to sum this whole thing up, are old airplanes safe? The answer is yes, old airplanes are safe, but the problem is, is not so much safety, but how much better they could be if the supply and demand worked out so that these newer designs could come out quicker, could be cheaper. Diamond Aircraft has done some amazing things with design. I mean, so many safety features that these new airplanes are coming out with, but hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for these airplanes because they are so new. We as the consumers have to pay for all that design, all that regulation, all the hoops they had to jump through to get to this point. So I hope this video has been informative. If it has, just drop me a like, maybe drop a comment if you have something else to say about this issue. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.